Welcome back to The Bottom Line. I am joined again by Justin LaFranco, Editor-in-Chief of The Morning Chalk Up, and this is brought to you by Trifecta Nutrition. Now, today we are talking about some recent comments that Dave Castro made that made us all think that the Open is going to be moving back toward its original dates, which is something we've been talking about a little bit as a possibility here. Justin, where are we at with this right now? Yeah, so you know, Dave said this about three times now um, on various podcasts, and he sort of hinted at it a little bit earlier on Talking Elite Fitness, and then sort of escalated it, and then escalated it even further to all basically it confirmed or rather uh, made it so certain that it's really hard to 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 imagine it's not going to be. Uh, but had basically signaled on the Masters Fitness Collective podcast last week that. Um, the Open would be moving back to uh, at least around its original time frame, which is oh, it's traditionally been uh, a late February, early March start. Um, didn't make any signals anything else beyond that, but had kind of left that not too much to guess there. Um, and and that's kind of a bit that's kind of a big deal, as as we've noted in a number of the stories, one a couple of the ones that Tommy's written, and um, you know, it certainly has a lot of implications to go uh, throughout the rest of the season. Well, it feels to me like the only possibility to keep the the the, the game season as we know it, as this sort of like competitive season going, given the fact that games has been pushed back into the fall this year, and who knows if it's even going to happen in early to mid-September if it happens later, then we are literally butting up against the fall open. And right. then given the timing of games in the summertime, if the world goes back to normal, it right. feels like the old timing is the only possibility. Yeah, okay. So like, think of it, think of it this way. This is kind of interesting. So uh, the still, t- still tentative dates for the, for the games is September 15th uh, week. The last year's open uh, was October 10th. Logistically speaking, impossible to run it. Okay. Also, you know, Look, the games has had the old games open has had a little bit of a participation problem that's has declined since 2018. 19's open and then the 2020 open that happened October 10th. Um, if they're looking to increase participation, having gyms that are currently closed and unable to participate literally outdoors or so, indoors or sometimes even outdoors, um, yeah, that's not going to help. Um, that's not going to help get more people in and that's not going to help increase your participation rate numbers and ultimately your dollars that are hitting the bank account. But it's also just not logistically feasible for CrossFit Games athletes to actually turn around and do that after beating themselves up in California. So I think it's fairly safe to say if I were a betting man, I'd put money on it right now and say open ain't happening in October. It doesn't really make sense to throw it in November or December then at that point with Thanksgiving and Christmas that are going on in New Year's. So look, if I was a betting man, I'd say it has to be at the earliest February, March timeframe, or possibly even later, depending on how this plays out. And we're still in a situation which is very uncertain, um, literally globally, where cases are rising again in Europe and elsewhere. United States is is certainly tackling a rise of cases here and the certainty around whether your gym is going to be open, whether they can operate safely or not. That's still all up for question right now. I think there's a nostalgia factor here that a lot of people are going to welcome. I think a lot of people miss the old ways, you know, pre-sanctionals, and we had regionals, and we had the open in the spring or the the late winter, however you want to say it. I have a feeling that there's just going to be a lot of heart for the idea, logistics aside, a lot of heart for the idea of of going back to the old time frame. What do you think? Yeah, we've seen a lot of comments on Instagram, and you know, some of the a lot of the athletes have chimed in. Um, You know, we're 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 really um, interested in seeing a later time frame period. The truth is, and this is the big thing that like people, uh, you know, people who are casual spectators are forgetting. It's that there's no off season for CrossFit Games athletes at this point. Right. The way it's set up, it goes, you know, here, here, look, look at this for a second. I just, I, I, I pulled this morning uh, as I was up at, at, at just a brisk 4 a.m. Uh, and, and started thinking about what we we're going to talk about today. Look at this. The, it, here's, here's some of the other sports seasons that are out there and some of their links. The NFL less than currently uh, less than five months. The MLB just shy of seven months. The NBA, a whopping 7.5 months. Uh, and the NHL, the longest of the big four, eight months long. CrossFit yeah. Games season, which started on October 10th of 2019, was currently scheduled to last until August 2nd, which is nearly 10 months long. It would make us the smallest, longest sport on record. That is the most CrossFit thing that could have ever happened to be the smallest, longest sport is so very much us. And, and, and the ecosystem, I don't think is really ready for that. So why it matters though, like what the bottom line is based off of that is looking at it and saying, look, we, we're pretty sure that the opens move into the spring. 
let's just call it, let's just, let's just assume that's what happens. And I'm pretty sure that the, that the games next year will happen in at least August, but perhaps a little bit later, depending on how this plays out and depending on what, what they learn from hosting the games in September. Um, that gives you a few months of, yeah. of, of, uh, of the CrossFit game season. So, you know, if the open stays at five weeks long and you make it to, you know, March, end of March or April or beginning of April or something like that, and then you have a few months to host sanctionals. There were 27 sanctionals scheduled for last season. There probably won't be 27 sanctionals next season. Logistically speaking, it doesn't happen. It, it makes, it, it's unlikely there's going to be three events every weekend for two and a half months and then they go right into the CrossFit games. It just seems unlikely. It seems legit basically very, very challenging to have something that large. So I think one clear implication, if they do move it, it's that some of these people are probably out if they even decide to keep the sanctional season. Yeah. And I would also be very curious to know what the actual qualification process ends up being if they move it, because now we've shortened the season, as you said. So we've seen a lot of issues in terms of, you know, timing for athletes, not being able to recover, having to get somewhere else, having to figure out exactly where and how they can punch their ticket. And we've also seen a lot of people saying that, Maybe the Open shouldn't be a direct qualifier for the games. You know, we don't know. That well, never was in the past. Regionals. So Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and we don't know that we're going back to a regionals-esque model, but moving the, the Open to the spring makes me wonder, okay, well, what's the interim step going to be? Are we going to re-implement right. one? Which could right. mean a completely different qualification for athletes. Now, the third year in a row where things are very different. Yeah, well, I mean, CrossFit HQ hasn't really led on to a lot of um, specific details about that. But based off conversations that we've had, you know, with various parties across uh, across the CrossFit global community, um, a lot of options are being considered, and none of which I think are are are, are codified enough to to really to really be brought out and d- talked about publicly. But the signals that we're seeing are that they're considering a lot of different things here, um, and 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 I don't think that any decisions have yet been made. So I don't think that the actual decision that has been made to move it but logistically speaking it seems almost an inevitability at this point and uh, honestly a lot of gyms really did like having it in the february march time frame um, all of them for different reasons some of it's just for behavioral reasons and they got used to doing it that way and it made so much sense for them that way you know you have the new year you have new members joining the gyms you've got um it just it made a lot of sense for a lot of people and so uh, bottom line I think it's moving to the spring, late, late winter, early spring at the earliest. I, I, I still think they have to take a look at where things are at and decide how they're going to make it happen. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of decisions to be made off top of that. Like you said, qualification, how athletes, you know, what's the next stage of that? Does it play into a larger season? Like, is that a qualifier for a sanctional and sanctional now replaces, and, uh, um, you know, uh, the regionals-esque environment? And is there a point system as people have asked for repeatedly and talked about and things like that so we just we just don't know yet and and I know and I'm pretty sure they don't know yeah well you answer one question about the movement of the open and obviously a million more open up so it will be very interesting to see how the entire thing plays out but Justin thanks uh, for joining us again on the bottom line thank you to Trifecta for making this possible and we will see you guys next time